EdTech Mondays Kenya is supported by the MasterCard Foundation Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning in partnership with EdTech East Africa. Hello and welcome to EdTech Mondays Kenya. My name is Moses Kimibaro, your host and moderator for the Kenya edition. This month, we look at monitoring and evaluation of blended learning models in Kenya. In recent years, Kenya has been at the forefront of embracing technology education, reflecting a global trend towards modernizing learning approaches. This shift is largely with the objective of the Kenya's Ministry of Education to provide education that is in line with the demands of technology-driven, globally interconnected economy. One such innovative approach is blended learning, an approach where traditional learning tools like pen, paper, blackboard, and chalk are complemented by digital tools to foster learning. As we embark on this journey of integrating technology in learning and teaching, it's imperative to understand not only the methodology, but also the measures of success. For this edition of Ethic Mondays, we are going to delve deep into the monitoring and evaluation of blended learning models, especially within the framework of the Competence-Based Curriculum, or the CBC. In today's conversation, we'll seek to understand the current state of blended learning in Kenya from the perspective of teachers and educators. To those watching, we ask, what can be done to improve the overall quality of blended learning for all stakeholders in Kenya? Please share your thoughts with us on Twitter using the hashtag Ethic Mondays. I'm delighted to introduce our panel for today. Patrick Munguti, Director of EdTech at Kenya Connect. Vanessa Obura, Digital Communications Officer at School App. Faith Mutunga, a teacher at Nyani Primary School. Our sign language interpreter is Rosa Molo. But before we engage the panel, let's begin with today's stories on the ground. We got a chance to tour Machakos County where we visited Kenya Connect to get a better sense of what they're doing when it comes to blended learning. Let's have a look at this story. Kenya Connect partners with 63 public schools, 51 primary schools and 12 secondary schools, and all these schools are under-resourced. So what we are doing as Kenya Connect, we are trying to break barriers to education, and we have various number of programs. We have literacy programs and technology programs. It is a nice idea to use these digital devices, especially in our area, because most of the learners, you find that at their homes, they use the analog devices, and with the use of the devices which the Kenya Connect supply or give us, the Chromebooks and the tablets that were introduced by the government in our schools, it is easier and makes learning meaningful. As we have been training teachers, I have really observed a lot of impact. Remember, these teachers were just skipping those coding topics. They were not able to teach. Only a few of them were able to teach MS Word. So after we came in and we started training them, now we have seen a change. They are not skipping those coding chapters. The teachers go into the classroom. They are able to teach the digital devices in grade four. They are able to train them on the coding skills which they acquired. I came to Kenya Connect and trained on Scratch and Robotics. And from the training, I learned a lot. Uh, the training assisted me in, in teaching Scratch, Coding, MS Word, and Excel, which are taught in that subject or learning area, which is science and technology. Through the knowledge that I gained from Kenya Connect, I started a code club in my school. We have 40 learners, and then uh, we have divided the learners into a group of 20. And then that is the time that now these learners get time more to interact with the digital devices, and uh, they have peer learning. Those who don't understand some parts, they, are, they learn from other learners. And then uh, being the uh, code club teacher or the leader, I also assist where they need help. So we have got many ways of measuring the impact by training the teachers. One of the impact is going to the classroom to do the observation. And when you see a teacher teaching the learners and before they used to skip those chapters, that's an impact because this learner is not only, this learner is being taught what they're supposed to be taught in the classroom. And remember our economy is, tra is transitioning to the digital economy. And these learners really need these coding skills which were not being taught. And also, we have success stories. When we go to the classroom, we get success stories. First, you come here for the library. 
then he come and tell me, Mom, there is a computer from boot camp at Konya Connect. I want to join it. Then I allowed her to join. He learned it, he had a certificate. And then he come and tell me he want to join a robotic. Yeah. And I see a lot of changes in that computer and uh, robotics. Because he helped me at home with computer to study as a mother. I would like to encourage all the teachers, wherever they are, since we are living in a digital world, they, I should encourage them to incorporate the use of the digital devices or the use of digital literacy in classes because everywhere you are taught to either use a link, download this, and if you don't have the knowledge and if you're not able to use the digital devices, you will not be able to carry out what you're supposed to undertake in some of the learning areas that we handle in primary school. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, maybe we can start off with uh, asking you to introduce yourselves and the organizations you represent, starting with your faith. Um, Teacher Faith from Nyani Primary School uh, in Machakos County, Mwala Subcounty, uh, Yatui Zone. So I've been teaching in Nyani Primary since 2021. Uh, my name is Patrick Munguti. I'm the director of EdTech at Kenya Connect. Uh, Kenya Connect is a non-profit uh, in uh, rural Wamunyu. And we are working uh, to break down barriers to education with our mission of uh, empowering and engaging teachers, uh, students, and parents so that they can be able to succeed in the 21st uh, century. My name is Vanessa Obura. I'm the digital communication officer at School Up. Uh, School Up is an educational platform created for everybody who plays a role in education. So that is it's created through different applications for a parent, the educator, the institutions, and of course the students. So I'd like to maybe share a question with all of you, uh, just to get a general sense of blended learning. We know that it's core to the CBC in Kenya and how basically we're trying to transform uh, education in the country. And I'd like to get a sense of your perspectives you know, the current state of blended learning and more importantly, how we can sort of measure success in this particular area. And maybe starting off with you, Faith, as a as a teacher uh, working at Nyari School, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what have you seen and what have you noticed uh, since you know, blended learning became a thing within the CBC? At the first time we had some challenge uh, because uh, not everybody, not every teacher who uh, is conversant with the uh, tech. So we had the, the LDDs, the tablets provided for the uh, learners we had the TDDs provided for the teachers, but you could find that they are just in the store uh, since um, we don't have uh, that, that passion, uh, that uh, self-drive to blend it. You could find they are in the store, very well kept, very intact. Uh, you come after three years, you find that they are very new. But since blending started with CBC uh, in some schools, uh, some tablets have been used, they have been introduced to the learners, but in some, for sure, they are still there, they are very new in the store. Uh, but for those who have used, the learning has become um, motivating. Uh, children have uh, broadened their mind. You can find a child going to the tablets and uh, googling things. So with that blending now, our children are using the, the eyes, the, uh, that is, they are using the hands, and since more senses are involved, the children are becoming now brighter than before. Patrick, I'd love to hear your perspective from Kenya Connect on the state of blended learning, and especially because, of course, you know Faith, I think your organization has been uh, working with the school where she is. What, what do you see happening in that space right now? The future of uh, our countries, the future of even uh, the world is to do with technology and um, having blended learning uh, at the school level would be quite important for the future child. As Kenya Connect, uh, we are looking this in terms of uh, how can we support the teacher, how can we support even the student in terms of uh, helping them access devices, helping them even access uh, these resources that are all over uh, on the internet. And I would say um, 
from our baseline survey, we thought uh, we found that uh, um, a big percentage, even almost over ninety percent, of teachers who are not uh, using uh, technology to teach students, and uh, the reason was lack of the skills, and also uh, even with the um, government providing tablets and providing um, uh, the digital devices, there was still a gap that required to be uh, bridged. And uh, I would say like the governments uh, tried as much as possible to have the teachers have the, t the, the skills, uh, but you found that uh, in most cases, um, the teachers were like technophobia. They thought, oh, now these are new things and we don't know what to do with it. One of the things as uh, Kenya Connect we see, uh, we work with is uh, looking at the needs and also uh, trying to see where we can fit in to support like uh, the teachers. And our theory of change has always been how can we support the teachers to reach out uh, to as many students as possible. I think what I can say is we are ready. I think from both what my fellow colleagues have said, I think the country is ready. I think educators are ready. I think also the students are ready. I think the challenges will come with, as we said, training, number one. I think first creating awareness of in terms of the technology that's there to help with the blended learning. I think the first step is letting creating awareness of the technology to support the blended learning objectives. Second is training, of course. It's very important for teachers, educators to be trained so that in the end, the students are also trained. An application like um, School App for teachers to be able to use them, educators to use them, you have to be on the platform. Faith, I'd like to come back to you. Now, obviously, you're in the classroom environment. You were there before, I believe, the CBC happened, and obviously uh, working in conjunction with uh, the program and using technology. Uh, when you want to evaluate or determine whether the approach is working from a blended learning perspective, how do you as a teacher see it? How do you notice or evaluate whether this is working for your students? I use um, observation to get to know the, the, the work that I've done, whether it is speaking or not. Again, I use um, a project work. Okay. I give project to the children. For example, I have started my uh, code club in my school. So after training my children on coding, scratch and whatever, I give them the project and tell them now, work on this. At the end, I'll only come and collect the tablets, the Chromebooks, and I go through. So project is another method. I also use a, a written test. I write the test for them and then give them, that is, uh, the parts of computer, mm. the functions, how to save, you write for me the steps of how to save your work. Those are some of the ways that I measure the work that, uh, whether the, my work is progressing. And again, uh, Kenya Connect tells us that uh, when children connect, great things happen. So other times I set the children free. I give them the, the Chromebooks together with the tablets provided by the government. I, I tell them to make their own projects. You'll find that they do great things when you give them time uh, to use their mind and come up with new ideas. What about you, Patrick, from the Kenya Connect perspective? How do you know or measure whether this is working or not? Uh, measurement is, uh, and evaluation is quite important when it comes to any projects that we do and also, especially even uh, to re also report like this is working or this is not working. Starting from the teachers themselves, uh, before we do any project for teacher training, we do what we call a baseline survey mm -hmm. and see or understand their level uh, of um, their technology. Because with that, then you can be able to understand how do you um, uh, make the training for them to, to, be, uh, to use the, the, the kind of training that you want. Because definitely if you teach them something that they know, then it means uh, they'll be bored. 
So we, after training them, uh, after getting the like understanding their level, then we ha we curate a, a training program. Then we train them, and after training, we also do uh, surveys uh, to make sure that they have an, uh, maybe understood what we were training and how they are gonna use it in the classroom. And from there, then uh, we go to uh, observe them teaching and uh, working with the students. Vanessa, I'd like to hear from you in terms of being part of School App, which is an edtech solution provider and a platform. How do you measure the impact of success uh, from a blended learning perspective uh, within your particular context? One way that we measure is how the audience you know, take what we, we are selling, the solutions, what we are providing, and how they respond to it if it's something they also, they also actually need. And how we do that is also um, measuring the number of people who actually use the, the applications. So how many people have downloaded it now? You can have millions of people have downloaded it, but are they using it? So we are also able, we're also able to measure how many people are using the application. Um, if there's a certain area that you are noticing, okay, they're not using it to its full capacity. Is it because they lack training or they are not aware about it? So we get to have interactions with them. So through, of course, our online community, our digital community, interactions with them, engaging with the audience. Then also, of course, on ground, the people that we go to see, the teachers, the educators, you know, we go and see them, you ask them, we're using this application. Do you think it's it's you know of it's of value to you? You know, and would you need training? And yes, yeah, so that's how we measure the success. So I'd like to come back to you, Patrick, and I think uh, you seem like you wanted to add to what um, Vanessa was saying, but I would like to sort of hear your perspective around um, exactly how you can see or establish whether this is working or not but more importantly, whether we have any gaps that we tend to notice uh, based on what you're doing at Kenya Connect. This is not something that you just uh, wake up and just test in one day or two. It takes some time because these are students who are being uh, introduced to new concepts and also the teachers are also learning together with them. And um, I would say this is something that is going to take uh, some time to see which uh, is bringing um, uh, maybe can we say it is the technology that is bringing the impact or do we say it is the teacher who is bringing the impact but definitely we need to understand that uh, whether technology comes in or not uh, this the, 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 the point of the teacher that cannot be uh, taken out because it is how the teacher is using the technology in the uh, curriculum that will help the students and that will bring in the impact that we are looking in the future. Because this is something that requires um, like uh, both the teacher and also the use of the technology to help. Because as Kenya Connect, when we look at uh, uh, some of the challenges that the teachers go through, they may want to do as much as the, uh, the best they can but there are challenges that they face, like if you need to uh, go to a, a link, of course you need data. In many primary schools, public primary schools, there is no internet connection. They may want to do that, but uh, maybe it requires a teacher to go the extra, uh, extra mile to be able to connect to the internet and make sure that the students are able to, uh, to learn using technology. And uh, that's maybe when we say that uh, uh, it requires concerted efforts, the government um, partners to support education in such a manner that all students will be uh, in the same platform. They are competing in the same playing uh, field. Because if you get to see like in urban centers, in uh, private schools, they have internet connection, they have devices, but what about the rural uh, child? And these are child, the children will be getting to the job uh, market, looking for the same jobs, and they have 
being disadvantaged uh, from uh, even the, uh, when they were young. So partners are very important when it comes to um, blended learning, bringing the government together. That would be quite uh, helpful when it comes to uh, blended learning. So as we're coming to the end of our conversation, I think I'd like to come back to you, Faith. And the question I'd like to ask yourself and also your fellow panelists is, what are the things that we can do to enhance blended learning? And more importantly, how can we measure success in a more effective way? When it comes to tech, uh, you cannot measure within a day because uh, for one, learning is a process. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to give something that you'll be checking now and then. For example, we have been partnering, partnering with uh, Kenya Connect and every time uh, they come, uh, maybe we were in uh, introduction to computer that is in grade four. Next time will be uh, introduction involves the parts now. Uh, the next time we shall talk of um, the different types of a computer. Mm -hmm. So before you go to the different types of computer, what do you go to? You, mm -hmm. you, you review the previous. It is after you have learned that you will go back to your students and uh, do something to them to give you the feedback. For example, the exams that we have been doing. Uh, when you look at the children, I have a, an example of two children in my class uh, who have a challenge. And um, when it comes to tech, uh, because we have talked about blended learning, when it comes to technology, they are among my best. So mine as a teacher, as a classroom teacher, I would make an appeal to all my colleague teachers outside there. Let's take uh, the tablets out of the strong rooms because uh, out there they are rotting. Don't keep them there and say that the children will uh, d d destroy them. They were made for the kids. So give the basics to the children and now pick them, take them to the children. Like now, uh, thank you to the Ministry of Education. Uh, it has gone around uh, installing um, some apps. It has installed MS Excel. It has, ex uh, it has installed MS Word last year. So my main word to the teachers, please, uh, let's not waste these children. Let's use them. If we don't have the idea, please contact somebody who knows about it and help the children. Patrick, briefly, can you tell us you know, the future of EdTech? Um, or rather specifically understanding the blended learning and what uh, we can do to enhance the monitoring and evaluation aspect of it. I would say like the future would be working in collaborations with the government, with the uh, EdTech uh, solutions, with the teachers. And uh, like Kenya Connect, we've been able to get support from Team for Tech, which is an um, impact accelerator, helping us support teachers with uh, devices and also training again in terms of coding raspberry pi foundation has come in to support so we need this kind of support because this this kind of support is the one that will bring in uh, the impacts that we are looking for in terms of uh, using blended learning thank you so much patrick and finally vanessa i think first it's important to understand the objective of blended learning i think once we are able to establish and to have objectives outlined and understood. From then on, we'll be able to now address the challenges and um, come up with solutions. Also, I think it's very important to have data, to use the data that we currently have. It can be a bit right now difficult to acquire real life data, current data. But I think with the data that we have, it will be able to help us understand maybe the challenges that are affecting the blended learning, you know, situation. And then from there, I also think training. I think we need constant training available for the teachers, for the educators, for also those who are looking for the different um, roles, the different people who, who play in the education sector. I think also to get training that is required, you know, for them to be able to perform their best in their role. Thank you so much, Vanessa, Patrick, and Faith. It's been a pleasure having you today on Etec Mondays Kenya. Thank you all for watching this edition of Etec Monday Kenya. And special thanks to our lovely panel for that engaging session. Follow more of these conversations on the MasterCard Foundation YouTube channel and the Young Africa Works Facebook page. My name is Moses Kenibaru. 
See you again on the next edition of EdTech Mondays Kenya. EdTech Mondays Kenya is supported by the MasterCard Foundation Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning in partnership with EdTech East Africa.